The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. You get your throat, kid. Leave us here, you talk. <laughs> Next time, come up behind a man when he's looking at you. No decent place for decent, careful drivers on the street. <laughs> When Luke was courting me, he had a bicycle and I had to ride on the handlebars. Well, yeah, but it was pretty snazzy. I had a nickel-plated flashlight taped on it. It was where it was taped that made it so uncomfortable. <laughs> like in Luke for months. Well, no, he never told me about that. I know. I hadn't caught you yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eddie, this sure is a beautiful job. Woo! I ain't never seen one quite like it. What kind of carburetors are them? Oh, all four of them are Stromberg 98 with progressive linkage. <laughs> These are stock heads milled 40 thousandths, two-inch valves, solid lifters, three-quarter cam. She'll turn 6,000 RPM. <laughs> That's nice. Kenny, you're a regular engineer. Oh, not quite. I hope to get into Caltech as soon as I graduate, if I can meet the language requirement. Well, sure you can. Heck, you talk as good as I do. <laughs> He means his foreign language, Latin. He's having trouble. Oh, Eddie, don't you have to look out for the police when you're driving fast on the highway? Our club rules won't let us speed on the highway. The minute we break a speed limit, we're out of the club. Well, what's the use of making it so zippy if you can't go fast? Well, we race against a stopwatch out on our drag strip, supervised by the police department. Well, say, I'd like to watch that someday. Oh, I bet Grandpa would, too. You know, he's always been interested in cars. <laughs> yes, you two all have a lot to talk about. Boy, Eddie, I'll tell you, if this was mine, I'd just have the whole thing framed. Well, thank you. Yeah. Say, uh, do you mind? Well, no, go ahead. <laughs> huh? Out of a look. <laughs> yeah. Mind if I kind of just sit in it? No. No, go right ahead. Well, well Luke, yes. you be careful not to break anything now. Oh, he can't hurt anything. Say, I guess if a fella can drive any kind of car, he, he could drive this one, couldn't he? Yes, it's no different. No different at all. Yeah. Sure has got a nice feel to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, say, would you like to take it for a spin? Me? Well, now, that's mighty nice of you. Luke, I don't know whether you should do that. I don't think I like you driving a car where you got to wear a helmet. Well, it's just about like a regular car, Mrs. McCoy. Just responds a little quicker. Yeah, well, I'll be sure and keep my eye on the responding. Right. Luke, that helmet looks brand new. You be careful of it. Yo, I will. I will, sugar babe. Yeah, and in case I drive off a cliff, I'll be sure and take it off on the way down. <laughs> Did 
today. Boy, if I had a day today. Road hogs. Grandpa, I like... People, traffic people that don't know no Grandpa, more about, listen, about driving. How do? About driving and, and you know... The, 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 Grandpa, the, I'd like for you to meet no Eddie Collins. He's a friend of Hatsy's. Well, it's a pleasure to know you, sir. Well, more the shame. <laughs> oh, Hatsy, you better go get a sweater. Oh, all right, Kate. Excuse me, Eddie. Oh, Grandpa, you look a little upset. Would you like me to get you some coffee? Yeah, that might be a good idea, Kate. It might draw the blood out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> you got a machine, son? Yes, sir. Well, you like me, you know the knockheads is on the road these days. Oh, yes, sir, I sure do. Some fella pulled right out in front of me in town today. If I hadn't slammed on my brakes, I'd have run right into him. Yeah, do it every time. Same thing happened to me. Fella come up and back of me this morning, never blowed his horn, never yelled at nothing. They expect you to have eyes in the back of your hat. Well, they have to be very alert, sir. You know, if I weren't quick on the trigger, he'd have bashed in the rear end. He tried to get me on the way back, too. You know some people think they're the only ones on the road? Yeah. Well, I hid that in the hook. <laughs> that ain't no car, that's a bloodhound. <laughs> Don't allow yourself in my property. <laughs> it's me. I know it's you. You've been chasing me all day in this speed burner. <laughs> Doggone it, Grandpa. Luke, is that you in there? Yes, yeah, it's me. Oh, boy, that's smart. You really staying my bridge. Well, what are you doing? So you're the hotchy totsy You're the Model A. This is the wide hooligan that nearly smashed me. Oh, Mr. McCoy, you did pull right out without any warning. And Eddie isn't a reckless driver, Grandpa. He belongs to the Safety Driving Club. Safety Driving Club? Why wouldn't you be safe? You got everybody else scared off in the road. Oh, Grandpa! Hey, Tassie. How could you have a criminal like this in our house? Oh, Grandpa, give Eddie a chance to explain. Well, maybe I'd better go. I can, yeah, we can talk about it some other time. You ain't gonna talk it no other time here. But Eddie's a friend of mine, I Grandpa. don't care. I don't want you going with him. I don't want you nowhere around him. Oh, golly. Now, uh, Hassie, pay him no mind. You go on with Eddie. Go on. You mean to tell me you're leaving Hassie go with somebody trying to kill your Grandpa? Oh, Grandpa, you're all upset over nothing. Go on, Hassie. Take him into the yeah, house. Go on, house, man. Go, 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 on, go, go on, Grandpa. Go on, Take care of him. You see him drive. Calm down. You just hit right. Calm no down. respect. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> I just can't believe you leaving Hassie keep company with a hooligan like that. I'm sure it wasn't all Eddie's fault, Grandpa. I know how you drive. Me? I drive like a lamb on the highway. Eddie happens to be a very nice boy, and he's smart as a whip, too. What, do you know he made that car out there with his own hands? Well, the Comanche Indians made their poison arrows with their own hands, too. I didn't think they got no truck with them kids. Well, they ain't doing nothing they, wrong. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't taking a nice behaved car. And they're fixing the engine so it's all riled up and nervous. Then they're noising up the tailpipe so you can hear it in the next world. And then they're driving like they want to send us there. <laughs> Grandpa, would you please forget it? Crazy kids, if I... Look, Grandpa, we still got a farm to run here, and we got to get the eggs ready for tomorrow's delivery. So would you please forget it and start helping me? All right. All right. Good. Now, let's get down to business. We're going to need about eight dozen eggs. At least that. And they all should be sent to jail. <laughs> I thought you said you was going to forget it. Well, I got to taper off, ain't I? <laughs> Pack them eggs in there tight, Grandpa. You know, that road to Fair Oaks is pretty rough. Oh, I don't go that rough road no more. I found a new shortcut. Two miles of straight paved highway. Oh, where's that? Just beyond Fenley's place. I gotta go awful careful for about 50 yards, you see, until I get on it. And then it's just as smooth as silk. Well, I didn't hear about them building no new road. Oh, it's there all right, and there ain't no traffic neither. Well, see, you get the egg dish? Oh, yeah. You get all made out so I know who gets what? Oh, yeah. you can't go wrong the way I got it fixed here. See there? Oh, yeah. I drawed a mustache. Well, that's it, done who? Yeah. He gets three dozen, see? Oh, uh, yeah, I can read the numbers all right. It's the words that I can't read. <laughs> now, the, uh, the eyeglasses? Yeah, that's Miss Granger. Miss Granger. And the picket fence? That's the Fred Morgan's. Yeah. <laughs> see, them spots won't come off. Well, I put them there, Grandpa. Yeah? That's Miss Simon. Oh, the little speckly woman. <laughs> Them freckles. <laughs> You're all set, then. Yeah. Well, I'll see you later, Luke. All right. So, are you sure the car will get across that stretch of rough road? It still ain't running too good. Oh, sure, she's just fine. <laughs> she... 
Well, all she needs is just somebody to have a little faith in her. <laughs> Speckly woman likes eggnog. <laughs> well, come on, let's hear you. <laughs> well, at least you're still breathing. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Pastor, Mr. McCoy. I didn't see you sitting back there. Huh. Hop in, you look tired. I ain't a hopping in the jaws of no loaded weapon. <laughs> well, I'm awfully sorry about the trouble we had yesterday. Yesterday but... don't compare to today. Two of your hot potters run me off the road back there by Tucker's Dairy. They smashed all my egg deliveries and ruined expensive automobile. <laughs> made a nervous wreck out of a calm, elderly old gentleman. Well, let me drive you back to your car. Maybe I can tow it home for you. Yo, oh, you go on about your business. It just so happens that I'm a little fussy about who my riding companions is. <laughs> boyfriend of yours, Eddie. Oh, Grandpa. Oh, Grandpa. How would you like to ride on the back end of a truck and have a cow's tail a flicking you in the face for eight miles? But you're home safe, Grandpa, so why don't you forget it? See, if you tell me to forget it just once more, I'll leap right clean out of these overhauls. <laughs> Grandpa, you was in the wrong. That road you thought was a highway's a racing strip in the city, give it to them boys to use. And that's what I aim to stop. Grandpa, you can't. You just can't. Look, them hot potters has got to be stopped. They're trying to rule the world. <laughs> just fine. All my friends at school are really going to love me for this. I won't even be able to face them. Oh, I can just crawl in a hole and die. Well, Grandpa, you really got a knack for upsetting people, ain't you? I'm doing what I think I ought to do. 
And they say mules is stubborn. Grandpa, I don't think you got any idea how hard them boys work to get that strip. Well, I shouldn't wonder. Ten-year-olds ain't allowed to buy shotguns, neither. They've been working at getting it for three years. It took a lot of convincing to prove to everybody they wasn't reckless. Well, I can believe that. It's like a grizzly bear trying to convince you he's a little boy in a fur coat. Look, Grandpa, the least little thing you say will wreck the whole project. Good. <laughs> now, look, Luke. I belong to Grange and the Mystic Nile Lodge. And when I take them down there and I show them the evidence of my car laying by the roadside, they'll see how it suffered. And I'll guarantee you they'll outlaw everything, including the racing strip. Oh, boy. Boy, when you set your mind on something, you really go after it. Uh, goodbye. Grandpa, I just wish you'd stop and think how many people you're hurting doing what you're doing. Grandpa, you know who that was? It was Eddie. And you know what he done? He had two of his friends go over there and pick up your car and tow it into Anderson's garage, and they're repairing it. Repairing it? God damn it! Well, Grandpa, it sounds to me like they're doing a mighty nice thing for you. Oh, hogwash. They're destroying the evidence. I gotta get in there and stop them. Well, just how do you figure on getting into town without a car? Is your cow friend gonna stop by for you? <laughs> Call me a taxi cab. Grandpa, while you're calling it, you might ask him how much it's gonna cost. At a time like this, money ain't important. I don't care how much it costs. Yeah, that was pretty fast, Eddie. Oh, yeah. Oh, I sure cleaned a lot of carbon out of this thing. Put on a new head gasket, replace the points and the plugs. The big problem was the carburetor. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was causing most of the trouble, so I replaced it with an old Stromberg racing carburetor for my car. Well, that looks like a fine job. Well, you know how I feel about a sick motor. It'll run great. Well, I'm sure it'll be appreciated. Yeah. Ralph gave me a hot spark intensifier from his car, and well, it'll pep up the ignition system. Good. That's gone. Where's the owner and operator this year, please? Mr. Anderson stepped out for a cup of coffee. He'll be back in a while. However, they don't repair bicycles here, sir. I know that. I come to get my car, and that's her right over there. Oh, then, uh, you're Mr. McCoy. All the way through. The boys and I are very sorry over the little incident. Sorry? Well, sorry don't feed the bulldog. Well, you're on the drag strip, sir. And we have signs posted to warn people. Yeah, and what does them signs say? That the hunting season's open on old men? Well, you gotta get them signs down. Because there ain't gonna be no more drag strip. I'm gonna see to that. Mr. McCoy, it's taken our club three years to convince the city fathers to let us use that strip. Every one of us has worked very hard to get it. Well, that's no trade off my charge. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, most people have the wrong impression of hot rod owners. These boys are all constructive, fine young mechanics. Earl Parsons there has already been accepted for training at the Air Force Academy in Colorado. Someday, perhaps, he'll be one of our fine astronauts. Well, he's got the ears, Rich. <laughs> Paul Raymond there won a body designing contest last month. And as a result, a major automobile company is sending him through college. Well, they just probably want to keep him off in the street for four years. <laughs> and you? A man of your age, you're cavorting around for these speed demons. Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now you'll give me the bill for fixing my car behind my back and I'll get on about my business. It's under the windshield wiper, sir. Probably charge me a small fortune to boot. A hundred and fifty dollars! I know you'd have a gun in my ribs before the day was out. Oh, it isn't that much, Mr. McCoy. You're making a mistake. There's a one and a five and an O. Oh. Don't you lie to me, young fella. I know your kind. A bunch of cheats taking advantage of an old man. Yes, I can get a great thing. Now, look, I've been around this town, and I know the shenanigans that go around here. Rotten cheats. <laughs> you know, these, these good shenanigans go on too far. These delightful shenanigans. <laughs> Trouble is, folks comes in to get their car fixed and you know, always complaining about the, the prices. <laughs> Mostly crabby old fellas with 
open cars. You know, people don't realize how much trouble the boys went to to get that strip out there, you see. And just because a fella gets run off in the road, he shouldn't, he shouldn't get excited and go reporting it up above. Mr. McCoy, this is our sponsor, Father Donovan. <laughs> Why, well, I know that all the time. <laughs> These young fellas today, they just don't get the jokes. <laughs> Mr. McCoy, about the bill. Oh, about the $150? Well, maybe you can keep the car, or, or maybe you'd like a, a farm. Mr. McCoy, your bill is $1.50. Yeah, that's right. I had to buy some new distributor points. I didn't have any on hand. You fix it yourself? And he did it. No charge. See, don't cough no more? Not a whisper. Here I was, about to bite the hand that put in my spark plugs. <laughs> and that fellow over there is going to college to raise astronauts. <laughs> He's a dollar and a half. He's a dollar. He's 50 cents, and I hope you'll forgive me for what I said and what I was about to do. I... Why don't you try it out, Mr. McCoy? <laughs> I'm anxious to. <laughs> It sounds like an airy plane. Oh, Mr. McCoy, be careful. It's a lot faster than you used to. Yeah, what's that? I said I put in some new cards in it. I don't think you heard me when I told him about the raising parts. 